All right, everybody, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. If you guys recall our last fig video that we did, we talked a lot about starting our fig season. We mentioned in that video that heat is really the key component to actually waking up our fig trees. So that's why underneath this really recent planting I did of figs that we planted actually this past fall, before the winter, I have planted these trees and then constructed a, a tunnel over top. This is a movable, easy to construct, very cheap, affordable tunnel that will help warm up the soil because that's what's the key thing, right? Is actually the soil temperatures. It's not the sun that wakes them up. I mean, the sun is a nice source of heat and especially in the case of this greenhouse. But metabolically and, and what really gets them awake and saying, hey, it's the spring is the heat, is the soil temperatures. So by Constructing something here like this low tunnel, by actually using our permanent greenhouse that we have over there, taking the tarp off, letting the sun come in, letting that greenhouse effect warm up that greenhouse, but the, also the help of a space heater that I have in there, our trees have gone crazy. In fact, especially in that greenhouse with that space heater, things have gone berserk. We even have uh, tons of Breva and even a lot of main crop that's now forming. It's pretty incredible how only three or four weeks can go by and things can change like that. The tunnels have only been up for about two and a half weeks or so. Um, and nothing is really totally active under here just yet. It takes a bit longer to warm up the soil in the ground than it does, let's say a container that might be in the, uh, in the greenhouse. But there are actually in-ground fig trees in the greenhouse. There's four of them in there. Three of the four are actually awake right now. So that's pretty incredible. Um, it just takes a little bit longer because the heat rises, right? It might be 100 degrees at the top of this greenhouse, but it might only be about 70 at the ground level. So it's a bit difficult, and it's also difficult to maintain them now that the sun is going down because a lot of the heat that was here and produced during the day is now kind of escaping here at night. And things are not staying as warm as they would in that particular greenhouse. So, but if you're interested in, in constructing something like this, it's pretty easy to do. I've done a number of videos. I have a whole playlist on this. The materials I use, we talk about the benefits of this thing, how to construct them, how to take them down. Um, I even have a video that we did actually this past fall or this past summer, talking about some of the downfalls that we had with this whole process uh, last spring. And we did not see the results that we wanted to, which was unfortunate, but we're still ironing this whole process out. It'd be nice if we could just construct a greenhouse and see the results that we want and call it a day. But I think there's a little bit more finesse, a little bit more to it than that. What I would certainly recommend if you are thinking about doing something like this is planting a row of fig trees underneath. You know, if this whole tunnel is about 12 feet in length or 10 feet in length, I'd only really plant two fig trees in here and train them as a low cordon and cut them back to the arms every year, kind of like you would do a grapevine here, like I have against the fence. There's a main trunk, and then there's the arms, but uh, you know, much lower height. And this can definitely be doable in these tunnels. Warming them up gets them a really good head start to the season. So that's our low tunnel update. Now, what about some of the other things we talked about in that prior video? The greenhouse is kicking, man. I told you, there's Prava and there's main crop in there. That would be the next video that comes out. But what about the potted trees? I did mention that underneath the sunroom, which is really right behind us right now, is where I store all of my fig trees for the winter that are in containers. If they're not planted in the ground, I either put them in that greenhouse or I put them over here in this root cellar type environment. And maybe you guys have a garage, maybe you guys have a shed, Maybe you created some kind of structure of your own, whatever it is. And um, that's kind of what we need to get them through the winter if they're in containers here. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, Ross, when are you gonna move those trees out here onto the patio and, and put them here for good for the spring and the summer and the fall? And it just seems like to me, as these pomegranates are out here, I treat them very similarly. So maybe just imagine these were fig trees. Uh, it's not a great idea to bring them out here. Um, as I've talked about actually in a recent video that we did about the spring is here and how we have our apricots and our stone fruits that are blooming and they're even in full bloom. 
And the problem with this is, although it's warm and it's awesome that the blooms are out and the trees are awake and spring is here, but the reality is we're probably gonna see a frost that's gonna come in very soon. And that's exactly what has happened, or what will happen. And about two nights, Sunday night, Monday night, we will see temperatures in the low 20s or even 20 degrees, which will probably be combined with a frost, I would imagine. We'll see, but temperatures of below 25 for the figs is not good at this point if they have leafed out. Now, these pomegranates are still dormant, and if I have dormant figs underneath this root cellar or your shed, you could bring them out here, and that would be fine. 20 degrees is not gonna be the end of the world. Um, we've subjected them to much lower than that this year inside that greenhouse. Uh, it got down to, I think, 10 in there. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but again, as long as they're dormant still, it's not the end of the world. We can still let them get hit by these lower temperatures. Um, but if they are awake and their buds have expanded and you start to see those green leaves or those green buds expand, that's when you have to really be careful. Because those, those buds, although depending on how further progressed they are, the worst this obviously could be in a couple nights. And the same thing will probably will have to happen is that I may have to protect not only these stone fruits, but I would also have to protect these figs if they were out here and leafed out. So it's just not a good idea. Um, you know, I don't really recommend it. If, if you had something like that, if that was the situation you guys were in, I'm not saying all of us are, but if that's your situation, you would really want to consider moving them inside, away from the frost, away from the cold, keep them above 32 at that point. You know, if temperatures are, um, even if there's a frost at 35 or a frost at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually possible, you don't want that to happen. Uh, a light frost is not the end of the world, but yeah, certainly we want to try to keep this new growth that is now expanding, even putting out leaves potentially, away from any damage because that's where our main crop, that's where our figs, our fruits will form, is on that new growth. So we need to protect that. And that's the key there. Now, when will I move these trees out here in the patio that are getting a more natural wake up process like you see here? where they're just naturally waking up without any kind of plastic, any kind of greenhouse, any kind of heater. Well, I, I like to bring them out about a month before my average last frost. Now that has been though historically a very risky date. Um, so I've played around with that and kind of regretted it, had some stressful nights. Everything ended up being fine, but I would rather not go through that again. And I think the benefit of bringing them out a month ahead of time isn't actually that great. Maybe two weeks prior to your average last frost, I think is a better date. So for me, my average last frost is May 1st. You could even debate May 15th. So really you should bring them out here in my location about April 15th. That's again, two weeks prior to May 1st. Um, I'd be really shocked to see if we get a frost after May 1st, although it has happened. So, um, so that's the story here at Morning Glory, is that we need to still be very careful with these potted trees. Um, although, if they're dormant, you're good. If they're leafing out, you got to take some precautions here. Uh, the greenhouse we'll look at in the next video here, guys. It's really amazing how much green and how much growth is in there. Again, I, there's even main crop in there. And the low tunnels, you know, they're going to get their act together. And uh, they're going to definitely hopefully see some positive results in terms of ripening dates this year. Um, what will be interesting to see, assuming we get the wake up process that I want, is I'd be very, very interested to compare a tree like this, which is our little ruby. Didn't prune it. It got through the winter with almost no damage. There may be a little bit here on the tips. I can't tell just yet. Regardless though, I have some trees out in the front like Campaneri and probably like seven or eight trees out there actually that didn't take any damage it's a much drier soil out there in the front but it'll be very interesting to, to compare the ripening dates of this tree which is a tree you would expect right the natural or the traditional way of growing figs is to bring all these branches together wrap the tree protect it the tree gets no damage and then see when the figs ripen compared to 
these tunnels compared to when the figs actually wake up in here, they start putting out fruit and we'll compare those two dates. I'd also like to see the com uh, comparison in terms of the quantity as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's obviously very interesting, this whole experiment that we've been doing um, with the high density, with these low tunnels, with uh, all kinds of things that we've been kind of stirring up over the years, trying to see if there's a different way, a different approach to growing figs in a, in a colder place. So that's the, uh, the video here, guys. I hope that you got something out of this. Like I said, the next one, we're gonna show you guys that greenhouse. I wanna talk a lot about Brabas because there's a ridiculous amount of Brabas in there. My views on those have changed a bit. And uh, we'll look at the, uh, just the power of just having a warmer environment. Um, it's amazing. So we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Take care, we'll catch you for the next one. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Take care.